with the, with the explanation I've received in terms of uh, Ministry X was given, they're doing water projects and water dams. Right. Ministry Y has been given, they're uh, doing uh, roads. However, so so anyone who's not information no, hasn't been clear, though. Even well, the ministries uh, themselves have said they cannot tell I'm the difference. I'm just saying that uh, f in terms of the money being allocated to ministries, mm -hmm. I am satisfied that the budgeting process was done by parliament, not by Rotich, okay. by parliament to allocate the money that we received for purpose of doing certain projects. Now, it is my responsibility as a member of parliament then to go there and say, great, Ministry X was given this water for what, uh, uh, I mean, this budget for water, right. it was given Senator, for roads, the are the roads being right. done, are the water being done? Right. And second, let me just complete this thing. Yes, There's please. this dichotomy that court wants to introduce, that you can separate the, the money, the money that looks like came from Eurobond might be blue, and the ones that came from taxes might be yellow. Well, that's a, that's no, a simple no, way of putting it. No, but just, surely, let me, let me, there should be a way conclude. to be able to tell which money has gone to which one and which specific projects were earmarked for this money. Um, that's a rather simplistic way let of let putting it, but surely with some serious astute accountants uh, within the Treasury, it should be able to tell we got X amount from VAT, we got X amount amount from PE, this amount that came from the Eurobond, and this is how it was channeled. Now, let me conclude. So, I'm saying that if you get an allocation to a particular ministry, that ministry, like roads, given 40 billion to do roads, you know, that's infrastructure. Of the 40 billion, uh, this is coming from the general budget, both borrowed and taxes. Mm -hmm. You've put another ministry 50 billion to do security infrastructure, build the houses for police or whatever. They have the, that money comes from poor taxes and, and, and the whatever. The most important issue here is that you cannot go there and then say, okay, taxes were 10 billion only. Let us account for the 40 billion. We are not accounting for the 10 billion that were taxes. The accountability, okay. that's why I'm arguing that. The so you're saying the accountability should be in should total? Should be for all the money. Uh, all right. You, you cannot I'm, say I'm account right. for Eurobond okay. and don't account I'm for the right, actual right, because, because my brother, Senator, was uh, involved in the drafting of the current constitution. And there is a clause that talks about the right of access to information. Absolutely. You cannot create the impression that it is only parliamentarians who've got that right to access information. The Never ordinary Mwananchi has got the right to access that information, whether it is held by members of parliament or it is held by the executive. And that is why it is important that Rotich and the executive gives uh, consistent answers because this money has not been borrowed by the political class. It has not been borrowed on behalf of the political class. It has been borrowed on behalf of Kenyans, including that toddler who's one year, one year today. Now, secondly, in this issue of access to information, it would appear like uh, Senator Murkomen has got some information that many of us don't know. Because if he can say that 40 billion has been allocated to infrastructure and it went into this project, that is what we are asking Rotich to do. And no, if, uh, if Senator Mukomen has got that information, then Rotich really should not be in a problem to outline that the 275 billion shillings that was received, 10 billion went to this road, 5 billion went to that airport. It is as simple as that. That is the critical thing that touches Kenyans. There are two other things, and, 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 and when I st the first one I talked about was the issue of, of the consolidated fund and its constitutionalism. Mm -hmm. And that's an argument that we will get an imp interpretation from the court. Then there's also the issue of tracking the money, whether it really came through. You know, one of the reasons why people believe that this money probably did not come through, or it's still sitting somewhere, is that we are not seeing its effect. You have a situation <laughs> where you've got a cash crunch in government. Mm -hmm. Senator Murkomen will tell you, and it is not a joke. There is no toilet paper in parliament. Be why? Because parliament <laughs> is not know. getting money from the exchequer. Why is in parliament getting money from the exchequer? The story is that there is no money. Why? Is it that there is no, is the government broke? Or do we have incompetent people right. who are presiding over <laughs> our treasury okay. in this nation? I, 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 just, I just want, uh, yeah, just, I just want to, year? no, no, no. I, I think that is information that is within the, the, I have not heard about cash well, so you are not aware of so cash no, 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 the no, so in, in went parliament. through late last year no not there was and that, that one was public information right. i mean uh, and and but many we thought that told the eurobond and we were told by the president yeah, himself yeah. Uh, was to avert no, such it a was situation to, uh, the the eurobond i think the explanation the president gave and, and and treasury was that it was going to stabilize the economy yeah. it was going to stabilize the interest rates and right. so forth and i think we have seen support that support in the and general yeah, however, last year Can senator I? there was some trouble with, with with our cash situation in the country. Inflation was at an all-time high. And uh, the government went into domestic borrowing, something we were promised would not happen with the issuance of the Eurobond, which you recall was even the justification to pay the Anglo leasing money. Thank you. Now, th this is... Um, let me first uh, respond to the 
what was I saying initially? That the first thing was, uh, you know, in terms of, in terms of um, access to information that my colleague has talked about. Uh, I think everybody has a right to access information, um, uh, including ourselves, but we have a greater a duty of care because we are representative of the people and we were put in parliament for purpose of summoning those people and questioning and on behalf of, of, of the common one energy digest the information and give give it to them and I've never said that, that that is a stop and that's why I said I'm confident Two, it's it's good to, for my brother to appreciate that unlike uh, the Rwanda situation is talking about in other countries we borrowed for infrastructure not specific infrastructure we never borrowed and there is this obsession and I, I, and, and we have raised in the past that is suspicious that ODM one wanted that money, and Raila Odinga specifically, to go to greenfield projects, to go to specific projects that he hurriedly, just before last elections launched, and you know, we, we hear of stories about uh, business brokers that have interest in those projects, and could it be that they wanted the Eurobond money to finance those projects because they had an interest? That is the question we're just raising. Let's, let's let, me, let me conclude. And then when we talk about the money that came for Eurobond, and like the ones that went to other countries, it came to be part and parcel of our budget. Okay. So once it went to the budget, it's now dispersed as infrastructure money to be used for infrastructure projects across various ministries. So it wasn't so earmarked for specific projects? Not specific is that what project. you're saying? Okay, yeah, exactly. all right. Well, okay. the beauty of uh, today's uh, global information economy is that information is out there. If you go to rich.co.k, you'll find the prospectus of the Eurobond. And it is very clear. They, they are, of course, there are those economic targets of inflation and interest rates, but it was very specific that this money was to support infrastructure, Which infrastructure? and it was also for general budget, budgetary support. Absolutely. Because no one is going to buy a bond. On that you seem if, to agree. Uh, you agree with me? Yes. Okay. No one is go going to buy a bond uh -huh. if they don't know how it's going to be, to be used. Right. We, they, this is not the first bond in the world, really. We've been buying bonds of uh, uh, corporates in Kenya. So an insurance company like UAP tells you we've got this expansion program across Africa. Right. And that is what points to the attractiveness of that bond. So the plans that we had for the bond were things that we should have stuck to. Now, there's okay. this, this obsession with Raila Odinga and the fact that yeah, Raila Odinga... Yeah, I'd like your response that to the Odinga, fact that there are some that, specific I mean, projects that if you look uh, at the SGR, none other than Alfred Keter, who comes from the senator's own party, made a lot of noise that the SGR was over-inflated that the cost increased when the Jubilee well, government got into power. Okay, okay. Now, could you, and could these you are the guys specifically to what Senator and these, Mokum these, these is talking, the guys about talking about in terms of... These are the guys talking about Raila wanting kickbacks. Now, this money <laughs> I never was that. to be <laughs> applied in a year when Raila Odinga was in the opposition. If anyone was to benefit from kickbacks, then it would have been the, the government. This is a narrative that is so unfortunate, Yvonne, because <laughs> it tries to say that one wrong is, uh, justifies I the other. That, that uh, probably we, don't, we have eaten Eurobond money because if we wouldn't have eaten it, Raila Odinga would have eaten it. It is a very, very wrong assertion. Very quickly. Uh, I think that is <laughs> very, <laughs> very, <laughs> no, no. very, very, very briefly. I have to I say it very clearly yes. that the obsession with the opposition leader with that Eurobond, when he discusses Eurobond, he discusses about Greenfield Project. He discussed about Eurobond, it discussed because about some certain of those projects. projects like because you said, those were projects were launched hurriedly before uh -huh. elections in the hope that they were going to win the elections and then continue with those projects. So we are saying it just raises okay. levels right, of your, suspicion. Your point <laughs> is made on that one. So I think yeah, we can tell uh, where that implication was going. Yeah, yeah. But let's talk a little bit about the IBC. Earlier this month in the State of the Nation, um, addressed by uh, the former Prime Minister, said IBC was not ready for the elections. They've released their roadmap. You've talked about claims of trying to rig the election. Um, the Jubilee Coalition says you're fear-mongering. The biggest uh, threat to IBC right now is that when someone raises an objective criticism of the IBC, Jubilee rushes and organizes a press conference addressed by 50 MPs to defend the IBC, giving an impression that IBC could be a department of the Jubilee Alliance Party. I think that is a very big threat to the independence and credibility of IBC. But to the more specific issues, and I was part of a press conference where we talked about IBC's lack of readiness. We are going into what we are calling mass voter registration. IBC only has 500 million shillings. Remember the guy who walked away with cash out of NYS, walked away with 791 million. The money uh, IBC has to conduct nation nationwide mass voter registration is what one individual walked out with. But the fundamental thing is this, and I will give you an is, example. Is that a fair comparison to put the I'll, two I'll, together? I'll, I'll, let, me, let, let me get back to the point. <laughs> I think you're <laughs> trying to make it take advantage of let, one scandal. Let me get back to the already. point. I know my brother will, uh, is a clever guy. He'll, uh, he'll respond in kind. Look at Mfangano Island, which sits in my, in my county. It is a ward. 
It is a ward comprised of more than 15 hills and valleys. And you are telling me that you are bringing two clerks with one BVR device to register people? That is disenfranchising our people. What IBC should have done, because they've always cried about lack of budget. These budgets, the budget committee in the National Assembly, which is chaired by Mutava Musimi, which is controlled by the government, has got the power to trim here and there, to provide allocations to IBC, so that when they do this mass registration, All they right. are adequately funded. So I missed something. Did you say the budgets committee is controlled by the government? Well, it's controlled by Jubilee, which is uh, you know, the party uh, that uh, the president sits on. Mutava Musimi, so Mutava Musimi is a member of uh, Jubilee, and we know he makes trips to State House to get directions. But Yvonne, look at that roadmap in detail. There will be only two mass registration exercises. The one that we are starting in February mm -hmm. and another one that will be in March. Mm. Will that be adequate to cover Kenyans? Look at the other issue of diaspora Well, voters. shouldn't these issues be taken up in Parliament yeah. by the Budgets and Appropriations Committee to just make sure that enough money is given to the IEBC? If you listen to John Buddy, who is the uh, ch chairman of ODM, yeah. and he said in that press statement that we are willing to go back when we resume in Parliament to sit down and see whether we can make approvals for a supplementary budget right. so that you can have adequate resources. Okay. And I think that should be the answer. That is where IEBC should be focusing on rather than saying that fine, we've got small money. Do you not trust them to conduct the general election? Do you not trust them to conduct a presidential election? Because no doubt, court will be participating um, in the two by-elections that are slated uh, for early this year. So on one hand, court says IBC is not ready, the elections will be rigged, there's no voter registration, it should be happening at this point, it's rushed. But on the other, you still trust the same arbiter uh, to you know, participate in, in a by-election? Yvonne, there are two, there, there, there are two, there are two perspectives. I, I mean, 17th January last year, yeah. we started campaigns in Homer Bay, exactly one year from today, yeah. and it was superintended by the same IBC, and I won. Of course, uh, the people I defeated said that I stole their vote, and they, they have no confidence yeah. in IBC. But there are two perspectives for me to rate the IBC, competence um, and partiality. In terms of competence, currently, I would put IBC at 3 out of 10. In terms of partiality, I would still put it at 3 out of 10. So are they competent the, the, for the, 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 the by-elections, but incompetent for the general election? Yes, a by-election is one position. It was only one box, one debe that was affected. In this case, when you go for national elections, you've got six debes, you've got thousands of polling stations, and you've got much serious uh, technologies. Now, the beautiful thing, uh, Yvonne, is uh -huh. that competence can be upgraded. And I think in this one year, we can attempt to deal with the issues of competence around technology, around people. The only unfortunate thing is that partiality sometimes is a very uh, innate thing. That once someone is impartial, it takes uh, miracles to, to change them. I think we can focus on improving IBC's competence, giving them enough resources, mm -hmm. guiding them accordingly to get the right technologies and to get the right solutions. Right. The issues of partiality, okay. uh, you know, that, that one we still feel that uh, the, I, the IBC uh, and particularly its chairman, uh, he has expressed and made certain statements that make him uh, <laughs> like that referee that used to favor Manchester United. <laughs> I happen to well. be a fan of I, Manchester I think, United, I think, so I'm slighted by that, but yeah, we just have 30 uh, seconds, Senator Honest. Um, Sorry. Well, just, just to say that um, I have not seen anything that makes me uh, doubt the partiality or competence of IBC, that a lot can be done, the registration must be continuous. Uh, let them use the money they have. If it ends at a particular stage, we must also be working towards putting more resources to IBC. And I think um, I want to caution court against the two things. One, this thing of saying elections will be rigged as a precursor to violence. Two, is the ultimate issue of saying that IBC is incompetent as an explanation of their incompetence politically. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Senators Kipchumba Murkomen and Moses Kajwanga on Checkpoint <laughs> tonight. What are your thoughts? I can see uh, quite a bit of your feedback coming in. Loyali Alumasa says everyone with an ID should be deemed a registered voter. How about that? We'll take a lot more after the break. You're watching Checkpoint here on KTN News.